Welcome to BCH Technologies. This is Kevin. Today we're going to cover how to refill HP's black cartridge or color cartridge look like this. You'll probably have a little plotter look like this. Or maybe you have a, those really old desktops like this. Uh, however, if you use uh, like special cartridges like this one and uh, your production system look like this and uh, do not review it yourself. Uh, this video is not for those folks um, who do the industrial printing. It's not because we cannot refill uh, those, those cartridges. It is because uh, uh, logistically um, it's very hard for you to refill it. Firstly, the HP make a th a three grades of cartridges. Uh, most home use cartridges look like this, 45. This 45 home use. And uh, those, uh, I don't know how the HP make this. This is really easy to broken. And uh, uh, you probably refill it just a couple times, not, not much. And uh, also HP make the industrial grade like this guy and those are really well made and uh, you can refill many many times so uh, if you just re decide to refill yourself and uh, uh, you don't know where to get those really nice cartridges so you have to end up with uh, buying uh, buying the HP original industrial cartridge anyway so and uh, secondly uh, it's very hard for you to actually uh, get the employee, train the employee, get every, everything dirty and uh, you have the error balance after, after your refill and uh, test, test it and uh, eventually people just give up, say hey, uh, from a factory is not, it's not uh, logistically, it's not really profitable for me to allocate my employee's time on this. Okay. Um, for those folks, uh, oh, the, the third, third thing is the ink. And uh, when you refill those cartridges, they have special ink in there. For example, this, uh, this is a fast dry and the work on the, on the uh, glossy coatings. And uh, HP also make a 45SI, which is solvent ink, uh, work on the different uh, non-porous uh, substrates. Uh, for BCH, we not only make two different kinds. We make a, okay. We make a, about right now we make about five different kinds of ink work for this. So if you refill yourself, uh, you're probably gonna put in the wrong ink into your in, into your machine. So uh, that's why for the industrial level, uh, we encourage people to contact us, and we're gonna get a couple of uh, paper samples from you, and uh, I. We're going to look at look at your machine, and uh, we decide what kind of ink is, is the best ink. We can let you to send the car, empty cartridge to us, and we re, we refill it and send back to you. So, um, so for this one, we're going to just focus on. We have a uh, one or two cartridges, and we want to refill it. And uh, which normally we sell this little kit with uh, pigment ink in it. Uh, if you want to dye ink. And uh, I have to show you another way to how to get, how to do the dye ink. Uh, just show you what we're talking about uh, different grades of uh, cartridge. This is a regular home use cartridge, HP 45. Okay, and this one is empty and this one is full. And uh, okay, both of these are uh, both of those are the lowest grade that that HP made and that they break pretty easily. And then we have this industrial level printhead. So you can see this one is totally, is totally different from those two. Actually, HP has, has an even better one um, than, the, than the industrial level. And, uh, okay. And this one look like an industrial print hat, okay. So this one you got from third party cartridges. They look exactly the same. And uh, 
So it, it, this one I tell you is a non OEM. Okay, let me put a non HP on the right hand side. So this is a real HP industrial level. So when you flip it over, okay, you can see this cartridge actually is a home use cartridge. Okay, the same as the crappy stuff like a HP make here. So what happened is uh, um, the the refillers they bought a regular home use cartridge and they filled it up and uh, and they sell it as industrial ink. Okay, so just make you so just make you aware that uh, uh, at the factory level you don't want to end up with uh, this guy. Okay, so uh, let enough for the industrial uh, printing. So the this home 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 section. So. Uh, so we have this one uh, full with ink, so I put it in. Okay, you can see uh, this cartridge have a little bit of dripping problem here. Okay, and. Uh, So the line is a uh, little bit uneven here. Okay, don't surprise uh, by the poor quality. I mean, this is a, a 300 DPI to 600 DPI machine, so it's per it's pretty norm normal. Uh, if your ink can print on those machines nicely, uh, you get really good ink. So, and uh, and also this is uh, the lowest HP ink. I, HP actually make three different kind of ink for this. So this IP, HP OEM. Oh yeah. Okay. And uh, I'm gonna mark this as a full. Okay, now we put the empty cartridge in. Okay, I can see it's completely empty. Uh, so we have two kits. One is uh, pigment, one is dyed. Only difference is, is uh, the, ink, the two bottles of ink. So uh, you can get uh, the kit from uh, uh, bchtechnologies.com and just go to refill kit for HP. And you screw down and uh, click 45. And it's this kit. So the pigment will tell you it's pigment ink. The dye, the dye ink will not tell you anything. And uh, this part is the same. So you have a air balance clip, and you have a little drill, and you have one green plug. Okay. Uh, in the future, or you don't want to buy buy this ink, you just want uh, the uh, the accessories, the green plug can be found at the accessories and you click plug and the green plug is right here and if you need uh, the uh, the air balance balancing clip you just go to accessories and go to priming clip
and uh, it has this priming clip. Uh, it's not including the kit, but I highly recommend it as I get uh, a larger size of syringe. And uh, here I use 10 mil, uh, 50 mil is even better. It just makes your life easier. And uh, uh, get a bottle of uh, uh, distilled water. So one gallon is only like 80 cents. Uh, then have like a, a little container. Okay. What I'm, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to fill it up with a pigment ink first. That uh, this is come with a pigment kit, and uh, we print a couple samples. Then we switch to uh, we switch to dye ink. So so let you see the difference. Okay, so. Um, here is where HP refill hole is. So HP fill, fill up the bag inside. There's an aluminum bag inside. Okay, he filled, they filled it up and then they put a little bit of, a, a, a little steel ball here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna push the steel ball inside. Then we're gonna, we're going to uh, remove the old ink as much as possible. And then we put a new new ink in. Then we seal this hole. Then uh, we still have air here because it's a bag. So we're gonna seal this. Then we're gonna remove the air from the from the print head. So let's remove the ball first. And this is just a sticker, covers the ball. Okay. And uh, then, I mean, you don't really need a drill to do this, but uh, uh, you, can, you can use anything that's, okay, just poke it in. The HP really has some balls. There we go. Go inside. Ooh, hot. Go, there we go. Okay, so now the ball is inside and uh, we're gonna pour some uh, distilled water. Oh, by the way, you want to do this whenever you change the uh, ink type or you change the, your ink supplier. 
So if you keep on using the same same ink and uh, you you don't need a you don't need to wash the old ink out, you can just add the new ink in directly. And now we're going to uh, put a plug on. So when you put a plug, this is now sealed. So you use your thumb, kind of uh, twist it, and it's now still not sealed. You can see it there. Okay, now it's good. So what we do is we draw the ink uh, uh, from the top. So uh, not the ink, we draw the water out from the top. And here's the clip. You put this in and uh, there's, a there's a groove here. And you just push forward. And you can use the original, uh, the one come with the kit. The one come with the kit is, is only five mil. If it doesn't come out and uh, try to recede, recede it, couple of times until you get it you get it right okay I'm gonna use 10 mil to just for a better suction this has been dry for a long time uh, if you cannot get the ink out at all uh, try to uh, try to uh, put them in a cleaning solution or water. Just soak them for a couple hours. Okay, what happened is, um, so for the silicon pad, there are two columns of silicon pad, and then they are connected in the middle. And then there's a little hole here that will get air suction out. So if your syringe didn't get enough, deep enough, this hole will not open, so it's not gonna suck. Or if you didn't line up correctly, if you see the, if you see it carefully, there, there are two rows of uh, printhead. Okay, so you either didn't line up correctly, or this is heavily clogged, so there's no ink ink coming out. It could be could be both because this one is really really dry. can see it start going okay it was dry so it was clogged and then after a couple tries uh, it start the ink start coming out okay you can see it's normal this is uh, the first one coming out is the air and then you get more and more ink
Uh, most people give up uh, when they cannot draw air out. You just need to try a couple times. can hear the, the foil bag collapse. That means we don't have any more water inside. No, just do one more. Yeah, that's it. Okay, now we can add uh, the refilling in. Oh, um, to wipe or not to wipe, I'm a wiper. So, some people say dab it. Um, I just like it. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Mmm, look good. Oh, whatever. Um, I did thousands of this. I don't. I never see. I never seen that. Uh, that. Uh, um, uh, that wiping hurt the print head. Okay. Uh, I, I know there is a big controversy, but I'm I'm the wiper. Okay. So my biggest complaint is when you take the cap off, some ink will come in out. And uh, so when you take it off, uh, what can I say? Be careful. Yeah. If you're gonna get the the uh, the, uh, the plug stay inside like this, and you just use a piece of uh, uh, duct tape and push it in, and then when you draw the draw the air out, and the thing gonna suck it in. And then we're going to do the same thing until a significant amount of ink coming out. You can see it's all air and a little bit more uh, bubbles. Still air. line up correctly I can f I don't feel any resistance when I do it so I just twist a little bit so make sure it get a good contact well, now you can see the is mostly air bubbles I think the next one will be ready okay now mostly is uh, ink now Okay, so now this one is ready. Okay. Wiper alert. Um, uh, there's some problem here, but uh, 
is not uh, related to the ink and uh, you can see the print head is clogged and this is a very old print head so we got a lots of problem to unclog it first so i'm not surprised and uh, i just want to see the line is pretty straight here so compared to hp's um Intermofa, the the blackness and the, the the straight of line is pretty similar. So we can compare on the same cartridge. Rather than we compare a brand new HP a cartridge versus a one that's already dried. So um, so basically, this is how you refill. Uh, how to how you refill it? So. Uh, so uh, if you get a couple of them, you want to just uh, refill them together and then um, um, and, and, and store and store it. And uh, we have two kinds of clips. One is a uh, heavy duty um, full clip, so it's the same length, uh, some height as the uh, as the cartridge. Uh, you don't want to directly just put it on it. So you can see underneath there is a foam pad. And uh, if you directly put on it, on it, the foam pad is porous, so the ink will still uh, get absorbed, and uh, and you still get going to get a dry cartridge. Uh, one thing you can use is a professional blue tape, and uh, this is special tape, and this roll is like twenty dollars, so it's a pretty expensive tape. Um, yep, by expensive, I mean you. This probably lasts a lot lifetime, uh, so. Uh, for the professional tape, what you want to do is the sticky part towards the print head. Okay, and the non-sticky non part is towards outside. Okay, and then you put it on the cartridge and the clip. And uh, <clears throat> another one is the half clip. And this one also have a foam pad, in, uh, foam pad underneath, and here's a two, uh, here's a two tabs to clip on here. So the foam pad is going to push the, uh, it's going to push the print head upward, so make it make sure it's sealed, and then this part is protecting the ribbon here. So uh, if you don't have uh, blue tape. Uh, at home, uh, you can just use a uh, regular uh, desktop tape. However, if you use regular tape, okay, this glue is not special glue, so you cannot put this uh, glue on the on the print head. So, so you reverse, you put the non-sticky part, non-sticky part towards the print head. So what I'll do is. I put in here. And I push it in. Okay. And uh, you can you can see the foam pad pu is pushed and seal the print head. And there's also two tabs. Make sure it's secure on the side. And uh, and then as a paranoid person as I am, so what I usually do is I push this back. And uh, I just make sure they thing get pushed down and I sealed. Okay. You can get those uh, storage clips by going to the accessories and uh, go to storage protection clip. And here's the heavy duty the black clip and here's the light duty short uh, orange clip.
So let's uh, change this ink to a uh, dye ink. Uh, we just use a regular BCH dye ink. Um, BCH dye ink uh, is compatible to all printers, all, uh, all models, and uh, there's no, no way you can go wrong with dye ink. Not bad, huh? Let's do a compare. Um, so those two are printed from the same same cartridge. And let's see the line. And you can see this cartridge really have problem here, here, with the pigment ink, and it's all straight and smooth for the dye ink. Okay, um, uh, okay, just uh, compare the, the pigment the dye um, for the HP 45. You might think it looks similar. Um, one thing is, uh, the, when the pigment dry, pigment pigments stay on the top of the page, and uh, the dye the dye will penetrate and uh, the the paper, so the dye goes deeper, and uh, all the dye ink uh, anti scratching. So if you just rub it, nothing gonna come off, and the pigment on the other hand, if it's uh, this kind of uh, porous paper, that's no problem, uh, scratching is not a problem. But if you have any kind of coated paper, uh, it could be a problem. So you have to contact us and send out some uh, paper samples. And uh, we have uh, anti-abrasion anti uh, fast dry pigment ink that you can use. And the other thing is, uh, so you can see, if you only lay on the top, the line seems to be uh, separate, okay? but. Uh, here in the dye ink, so the line is kind of uh, spread out a little bit because when the dye ink penetrates, it's not only penetrated vertically, it also penetrates horizontally. That's why you have this. Another <clears throat> thing is the bleeding, okay, and uh, that's not much. Actually. Uh, the bleeding is uh, if you print a double sided paper. On the back side, you can see uh, I use a permanent marker. So once that pigment is already penetrated the next uh, to the other side. Uh, on the back side, um, the concern is uh, because the dye ink is penetrating. So on the back side, on the back side, and uh, if you print double sided pages, you're going to have uh, floss ink goes to the second page. Uh, actually, uh, if you use regular papers, there's no concern. Um, I mean, it's not, it's not that there's, there's no concern. It's it's about uh, equally penetrating. So there's no there's no much difference if you, use, you just use regular paper. Okay. And uh, third difference is uh, the pigment ink is uh, weatherproof. So if you print the out, outdoor banners and uh, use use pigment ink. If you uh, just go to use indoors, you use dye ink. And uh, another thing is uh, the dye it by itself is dye, so when you get it wet, it's going to run. But it's not an end of word, and uh, if you accident, if you get a document, you accident pour coffee on it, and uh, 
it actually is it, it's not a big problem so let's let's get them wet You can see actually the magic marker runs more uh, than your dye ink. You can see the dye ink start running. Uh, by the way, we're, we're using uh, Windex. You can see the pigment ink is still pretty clear. The dye ink, and it runs less a bit. So if you pour coffee, you just wipe it up and uh, clean it and uh, you still can see the letters and uh, that's no problem. Uh, it's not like uh, when you get wet it's, you can get a, a like a blank sheet of paper. Okay we're just going to hand it for, hand for to dry. Okay our pages are almost dry. You can see for the um, for the pigment ink there's no running of colors at all. And uh, for the dye ink, it's not that horrible. I mean, every letter, everything is still pretty clear. And uh, so if, and actually the the Sharpie, the Sharpie runs a, a lot more than dye ink. Um, so basically pigment ink and dye ink is not that much different. And uh, uh, all I'm concerned is whether I use it indoors or outdoors. And even for outdoors, the dye ink will not uh, will not be that bad. I mean, it, uh, eventually going to fade, but it's not going to fade like a, to a, a blank page of paper. So, uh, so it's up to you, uh, whatever you want to use. Uh, oh, by the way, the supposedly the pigment ink lasts a lot longer. It's like 120 years, and the dye ink lasts uh, uh, like eight, uh, like a 40 to 80 years. Um, but you know. Uh, I hope I can live to uh, see this page fade. Um, uh, another thing is, uh, if you know uh, the iris printer that all the museums use to reproduce their uh, artworks, those are printed on dye ink. So if the museum is not concerned, and uh, then why, why, why should concern? Um, and uh, if I can use Sharpie, why don't you use dye? So it's up to you. I hope you enjoyed this video. Visit us at www.bchtechnologies.com or locally at Greensburg, North Carolina. Thank you. Cheers.